Hello! Ako po si Bishop Broderick Pabilio, Apostolic Administrator ng Archdiocese of Manila. Sa darating na Sabado, February 6, ay formal nating bubuksan sa Archdiocese of Manila ang pagdiriwang natin ng 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Kinabukasan nito, February 7, araw ng linggo, ay sa ating mga parokya naman ito gagawin. Magandang tandaan na ang focus ng taon na ito ay Missio Agentes, Mission to the Peoples, ang ating misyon sa sambayanan. Sa pagbubukas natin ng 500 year celebration, ito ay gusto nating pagtuunan ng pansin. Kaya may dalawang bagay na gagawin tayo upang maalaala natin na may misyon tayo. Una, magsuot tayo ng ating 500 years mission cross. Ibabalik natin ang ating magandang tradisyon bilang mga katoliko na magsuot ng krus. Ito ay sagisag ng identity natin at pananampalataya kay Jesus. Pero ngayong taon, ito'y magiging tanda ng ating pagtugon sa misyon. The cross will be our badge of mission. We give our yes to mission. Makikita natin sa Mission Cross ang pangalan ni Jesus na nakasulat sa Roman alphabet at sa ating sinaunang baybayin. Ito ay simbolo ng pagtatagpo ng ating kultura at pananampalatayang Kristiyano na ang simbahan ay kaagapay sa pagunlad ng buhay ng tao. Nakasulat naman sa likod ang pangalan ni Maria ang ating mahal na ina na hindi mawawala sa dibusyon ng mga Pilipino. Sisikapin ng ating mga parokya at mga komunidad na ipalaganap ang ating Mission Cross. Maibahagi ito lalo na sa mga mahihirap nating mga kapatid upang maramdaman nilang kasama sila sa 500 year celebration. Let us bring back this beautiful tradition Let us wear our mission cross and give our yes to mission. Ikalawa, aawitin natin bilang recessional song sa lahat ng misa ang ating official mission song na We Give Our Yes, composed by our very own Father Carlo Magno Marcelo at inamit ni Jamie Rivera. Ang kanta na ito ay magpapaalaala na dapat sa atin ng ating pagtugon sa misyon. We give our yes to mission. Kaya ang tawag natin dito ay mission song. Dahil tuwing aawitin natin ito, dapat mapukaw sa damdamin natin na tayo ay tinatawag ni Jesus na tumugon sa kanyang misyon. At ano ang tugon natin? We give our yes. Sa pagbubukas natin sa Archdiocese of Manila, inihikayat ko ang lahat na gawin ang dalawang bagay na ito. Suotin ang ating mission cross at awitin ang ating mission song. Kung gagawin ang lahat ito, magiging mabunga lalo na ang mga darating pang mga activities sa isang taong pagdiriwang natin ng 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Huwag kalimutan, i-like, i-follow, at i-share ang official Facebook page ng 500 years of Christianity Archdiocese of Manila. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes.
before the Mass. Prepare yourselves well for it. Do not watch it with a cup of coffee in hand. Read the Mass readings to prepare yourselves. Think what you are to thank the Lord for and what to offer to Him this Mass. Remember, you are praying this Eucharist with many other fellow Catholics. During the Mass Stay in reverent gesture throughout the Mass. Pray with the whole family. Join in prayers, response and singing. At the time of communion, make a spiritual communion. After the Mass, take some moments of silence to read again the scriptural readings and reflect. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather today as one local church in the Archdiocese of Manila to formally open our celebration of the 500th anniversary of the arrival of Christianity to our beloved land. On this day, we also celebrate the 442nd anniversary of the establishment of Manila as the first diocese in the Philippines. In this Eucharist, let us thank the Lord for the gift of faith, for the call to be members of the Church, and for the mission to proclaim His mercy and love to the world. Let us pray that our Jubilee year may bring about a renewed appreciation and a more fervent living out of the faith in the Church and in our land. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love, let us call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who sent your Son into the world as the true light, pour out, we pray, the Spirit he promised to sow seeds of truth constantly in people's hearts and to awaken in them obedience to the faith, so that being born to new life through baptism, all may become part of your one people. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But that everyone has heeded the good news. For Isaiah says, The Lord who has believed what has heard from us. 
Thus, faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes from the word of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify Him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is His kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Please stand. all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost, you have received. Without cost, you have received are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journey, or a second tunic, or sandals, or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words Go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you. It will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
please remain standing. Good morning to you all. Thank you for coming and joining us in this celebration as we open in the Archdiocese in our local church this celebration of the 500th anniversary of the coming of the faith. I would like especially to thank our Excellency Charles Brown for joining us, the Papal Nuncio, in this celebration. It's a great honor, Your Excellency. And also, it's a great honor that leaders of our local governments in the Archdiocese of Manila are here to so thank you, Vice Mayor Hani Lacuna, for being here of Manila. Thank you, Mayor Emilda Rubiano of Pasay, for coming. Thank you, Mayor Abi Binay, for being here. And also thank you for Mayor Carmelita Abalos for making the effort to be here. And also Councilor Keith Peralta of San Juan and Attorney Guillier Asilo, the Administrator of the Intramuros Administration. So we are privileged to have also our civil governments joining us in this celebration. We belong to a local church with deep historical roots. Today, we are celebrating the 442nd anniversary of our being elevated to a diocese, the first in the country having under its jurisdiction the whole land, the entire country. This was decreed by Pope Gregory the Thirteenth. That was in 1579. Think about it. 1579. 442 years ago. Sixteen years later, in 1595, Pope Clement VIII raised Manila to an archdiocese, its suffragan dioceses being Nueva Segovia in the Elocandia, Nueva Cáceres in Bicol, and Cebu in the Visayas. This tells us that all the dioceses in our country came from Manila. The expansion of the church in the Philippines started from Manila. This is a source of pride for us, but also a big challenge. So it is very appropriate that here in the Archdiocese, we open our 500th anniversary of the coming of Christianity in the Philippines on this day. However, we will also join the national opening activities on Easter Sunday, on April 4, with the opening of the Holy Doors all over the country. That will be the official opening for the whole country of the 500th year anniversary. The theme of this year is Missio Agentes. 
May this celebration spur us on to continue this expanding mission of Manila, to which we are all heirs to. The word expansion has a negative connotation. It smacks of colonialism. It brings in the idea of domination. Yes, people accuse us of imperial Manila. It gives us the taste of accumulation of wealth, of prestige, and even of primacy. But we are speaking not of expansion itself, but of the expansion of the mission. St. Paul tells us that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. But how can they call on Him in whom they have not heard? And how can they believe in Him of whom they have not believe of whom they have not seen? Let us hear, let all hear that Jesus is Lord. Let our voice go forth to all the earth and our words to the ends of the world. This is our ever-pressing mandate from the Lord Himself. For anything with deep roots in history, there is the danger of becoming a monument. In fact, we glory in our artifacts, in our old churches, in our antique images. We may have these, but let us not, as church, be just antiques, museums, and artifacts whose main concern is preservation and conservation. That is why Pope Francis calls us to get out of the maintenance mode. Instead, we should be in the missionary mode. He clearly wrote in Evangelii Gaudium, I hope that all communities will devote the necessary effort to advancing along the path of a pastoral and missionary conversion, which cannot leave things as they presently are. Mere administration can go no longer be enough. Throughout the world, let us be permanently in a state of mission. Being in a state of mission is not optional. It is the necessary condition if we want to be renewed as a living church and not just be a museum that is visited once in a while but could not change lives. Pope Francis took the words of St. John Paul II when he spoke to the bishops of Oceania. All renewal in the church must have mission as its goal. It is not, if it is not to fall prey to a kind of ecclesial introversion. In this vein, Pope Francis continues, Each Christian and every community must discern the path that the Lord points out. But all of us are asked to obey His call to go forth from our own comfort zone in order to reach out the peripheries in need of the light of the gospel. To leave the comfort zone is difficult. We would rather stay in our cozy and familiar situations. But COVID-19 has pushed us out of our comfort zones, whether we liked it or not. We have to adapt to the new realities if we are to survive. Let us not just wait till things get back to normal. And the normal will not be where we were in 2019 and before. It will be something new. The virus has already pushed us to the peripheries. Many of us went to the poor to, to distribute the gift certificates, and the ayudas. And we have realized that there were many 
there are many pockets of poverty in our areas that we have not yet reached. A sense of solidarity among parishes have been formed. We have parishes helping fellow parishes. This experience has bonded us more together as an archdiocese and not just as individual parishes. Now that we have the initial push to get out of our comfort zones and to reach out to the peripheries, let us continue on this missionary mode. Pope Francis again tells us, and I quote, the pastoral ministry is a, mission in the, a missionary key seeks to abandon the complacent attitude that says, we have always done it this way. I invite everyone to be bold and creative in this task of rethinking the goals, structures, styles, and methods of evangelization in their respective communities. End of quote. Yes, let us be bold in striking out new grounds. Naturally, there will be new expenses. We will have to make mistakes. There will be criticisms. But move on. When St. John Bosco was being criticized by his fellow priests in Piedmont, Italy, for going out to collect street boys from the streets, and even playing with them, a thing that was unheard of during his time, a priest running races with children in the streets. He just shrugged his shoulders and said, let the birds chirp, let us go on doing our work. Yes, let the birds chirp. As I mentioned before, our mission, one, our mission field and a great mission field now, in fact, a worldwide space that we have to reach is the digital continent. The digital way of connecting to people and evangelizing will be with us to stay, even with the coming of the vaccine. Let us invest, let us improve, let us learn to bring God's Word in the world of the Internet. Let us recruit people, and many of them the young, for this mission. Let us not say that I am too old for this. The Internet is not only for techies but, and for the young. It is also for us seniors. Let us not be afraid of this technology. It has great potentials for the good. Missio Agentes for many of us is not going to Papua New Guinea or to China. Missio Agentes is going to the peripheries. And these peripheries are not just out there. Many times they are around us. And yet they are people whom we do not yet reach just around us. But we have not reached them. They can even be those selling flowers outside our churches, those who sleep in the streets, those people to whom the church is just a building among so many buildings in the neighborhood. How can we reach them? How can we make the church relevant to them? We have done a bit on this by the ayudas that we give. And this should continue as more people will be in need. In our online CBCP plenary meeting 10 days ago, we have approved a pastoral statement on stewardship, which has been forwarded to you a week ago. There we have reiterated PCP2's decree to remove the arancel. We have started this process in the Archdiocese even before the pandemic. Now we have a more grave reason to pursue it so that we can become more comfortable with the words of Jesus that we have heard in our Gospel today. 
What you have received without pay, give without pay. Let us not give the reason that we are in the pandemic and we have little collection. It is not only we who are in the pandemic. Also the poor are in the pandemic and they suffer all the more. In the 500th anniversary of Christianity, we give this gift to the people that they can avail of the services of the church for free. Let us not doubt the generosity of the people. This pandemic has demonstrated to us that even in times of hardship such as this one, people give to the church. If they see that the church has programs for the people, ang pagtanggal ng arancel ay hindi pakiusap. Itinalaga na ito ng simbahan sa buong bansa. The recent instruction from the Congregation of the Clergy that came out in July 20, 2020, entitled "The Pastoral Conversion of the Parish Community." in the service of the evangelizing mission of the church, states, and I quote, The Lord taught His disciples to have a generous spirit of service, to be, to be a reciprocal gift for the other, and to have a special care for the poor. From this derives the need not to commercialize the sacramental life, and not to give the impression that the celebration of the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, along with other ministerial services, are subject to tariffs. End of quote. Another aspect of evangelization that we have to stress to go out of the maintenance mode is how to present the Word of God. People need the Word of God. Let us present to them the Word of God and not just our ideas or our thoughts about it. This means that we need to be more immersed into God's Word and be so captivated by it that we can proclaim it to the others. I've always been saying to my students, it is very presumptuous to expect that people will find the good news if we ourselves who preach it do not find it as good news. My fellow priests, we always preach. We always speak to the people. Do we speak because we have to speak or because we have something to say and something meaningful to say? God's Word, however, is not only for individuals. There is a social dimension in God's Word. The Bible does transform society. Let us bring out the social implication of God's words. There are so many issues in society now that need to be enlightened by God's Word, which is a message of justice, of peace, of love, of truth. When St. John Paul II said, do not be afraid, he did not only mean, do not be afraid to follow the word, but also do not be afraid to preach the word. Speak the word in season and out of season and with care to instruct, St. Paul tells us. Pag sinabi nilang namumuliti ka ka na, Kasi binabanggit natin ang social implication of the good news. And they always say, they always say that when they do not want to hear our message, let the birds chirp, but move on with the mission. We open today the year of the mission. Let each of our community enter into the missionary mode. We go out of our comfort zone to reach out to the peripheries. The internet is a means to reach out to countless people in the digital continent. A gift that we offer to our people this year is to offer the services of the church for free. 
we take out the arancel as our bishops are telling us. Our mission is to shout out the good news. That is what evangelization is. To, to all. Our product line, the good news of salvation, is always needed and always relevant. Let us present it so to the people. So we have to be infused with the message so that we can attract people to it. The message of justice, peace, truth, and love is needed not only by our souls, but also by society at large. So we reach out, we, bring, we preach out the social implications of the good news. From the local church of Manila, the Christian message has reached out all over the country. May this renewed missionary zeal from us, the unworthy heirs of the expansion of the mission, enkindle the fire of the love for Jesus, not only in the whole diocese, but in the whole country. Please stand. We are the people the Lord has saved. As we follow him along his way of faith, let us lift our hearts to his Father in prayer. For every petition we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer for the church on mission in the world, that we may be reminded that each of us is a missionary. May our faith in Jesus Christ send us forth to give ourselves and build life-giving relationships. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our national and local leaders, that they may realize that they too are missionaries chosen by Jesus to continue his mission of le leading by humble and selfless service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick, especially those afflicted with COVID-19, for the victims of injustice, for those who are poor and neglected in society, and for all those in need, that in their suffering, they may witness to the compassion of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each one of us, that we may resolve to faithfully and courageously practice our faith by working for justice, unity, love, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, as we lift our hearts to you in humble supplication, so we prepare to return to you our love and gratitude in the Eucharist of your Son, our eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look, O Lord, upon the face of your Christ, who handed Himself over as a ransom for all so that through Him, from the rising of the sun to its setting, Your name may be exalted among the nations, and in every place a single offering may be presented to Your Majesty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word, made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the zeal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Santo, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Broderick our Administrator and all the clergy. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are invited to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under, under my, my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. As your papal nuncio, it always gives me tremendous joy to be with you in this absolutely splendid cathedral. And I want to thank you, Your Excellency, Bishop Roderick Pabillo, for your invitation to me to be part of today's celebration. This important milestone in the commemoration of 500 years of Christianity here in the Philippines, and indeed the 442nd anniversary of the elevation of Manila as a diocese. I feel immensely privileged as the representative of Pope Francis to be with you today in your wonderful cathedral. And indeed, I feel equally privileged to be your apostolic nuncio in this year in which we celebrate the arrival of Christianity in these islands. When Pope Francis was here in Manila in January of 2015, he made reference to the celebration that we are marking today pointing out how, and I quote, the Christian message has had an immense influence on Filipino culture. It is my hope, Pope Francis said, that this important anniversary will point to its continuing fruitfulness and its potential to inspire a society worthy of the goodness, dignity, and aspirations of the Filo Filipino people, close quote. It's interesting, isn't it, brothers and sisters, how in God's plan in 1521, when Christianity in Europe was beginning to fragment, here in the Philippines, Asian Christianity was beginning to take root. And in these 500 succeeding years, we have witnessed an amazing increase of the faith here in the Philippines. And that is what we thank God for most earnestly in our hearts today. And at the same time, we recognize that we are not merely celebrating the past, or as His Excellency Bishop Broderick said, celebrating a monument or a museum. We are also looking forward to the future. We look to the continuing fruitfulness and the potential of our Catholic faith as Pope Francis said, to inspire a society worthy of the goodness, the aspirations, and the dignity of the Filipino people. And brothers and sisters, we do all of this always under the protective and loving gaze of Our Lady who watches us in her beautiful image above the main altar here, Our Lady who gave us her son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. May God bless you and keep you, and may this year of celebration be a year worthy of this momentous occasion that we celebrate with such affection and love. Please stand and hold your mission crosses. we have the prayer of blessing of the mission cross. Let us pray. 
We bless you, O God, and we praise your name. In your merciful providence, you sent your Son into the world to proclaim the good news of salvation to all and to enrich us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is the faith that reached our land 50 years ago when the gospel of Jesus was proclaimed and the cross was planted in our soils. Through the sign of the cross at baptism, we became your sons and daughters. Through the cross, we became Christians, and in the cross, we have received grace and salvation. We bless you, Father. We beg you, Father, bless these mission crosses. And the cross, let the cross remind us of who we are and what we are called to be. Let the cross be our identity and our mission, and grant that we who preach the crucified Christ to others may also strive to be transformed into His image. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, see, I 
seated. Bishop Abilio will now present the cross to the mayors of the cities within the Archdiocese of Manila, to the pastors and lay representatives of our Jubilee churches, and to the representatives of the religious and other sectors in our Archdiocese. Please stand and hold your cross on your palm. Please hold your crosses on your palm. With the mission cross in your hands, let us renew our commitment as God's beloved children. And as missionaries of Christ, let our response be, To your mission, Lord, we say our yes. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. To integral faith formation, to deepen our knowledge of the contents of our Catholic faith, 
and to share them with others and to allow our faith to guide our daily and private public lives. We commit ourselves to the Lord. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. To activate among the laity the charisms of the Holy Spirit, to empower our laity to be co-responsible agents of evangelization and leaders in the task of social transformation, to be good, dutiful, and responsible Filipinos to ensure good governance and accountability from our leaders, and to condemn senseless killings and violation of human rights. We commit ourselves to the Lord. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. To our vision of becoming truly a church of the poor, to assist those who are materially poor, to work for the eradication of poverty, corruption, economic and political imbalances in our society, and to restore integrity, integrity and truth, justice, peace and love in our land, we commit ourselves to the Lord. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. To make every Christian Filipino family a domestic church, to intensify our efforts to defend human life from conception to natural death, to strengthen marriage and the family, to protect them from ideas and values that destroy them, to combat fake news by spreading the truth and proper education, we commit ourselves to the Lord. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. To form our parishes as truly a communion of communities, to improve not only the structure of, of governance, but also the quality of life in our parishes, to strengthen the fellowship, belongingness, and participation of its parishioner, and to promote ecological conversion by taking care of our common home, we commit ourselves to the Lord. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. To the renewal of the values, mindsets, behavior, and lifestyles of the clergy and the religious, and to rediscover new and effective ways of collaborating with the laity for mission and ministry, we commit ourselves to the Lord. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. To be a church of young people, to encourage them to live out their unique roles in society and in the church, to listen to them, to be con contaminated by their zeal and passion, and to respond to their dreams and aspirations, we commit ourselves to the Lord. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. To open, honest, respectful, and loving dialogue of life, prayer, and action with other Christians and with our brothers and sisters of other faiths. To promote peace and harmony, especially in areas of armed conflict, solidarity in the struggle for social change, unity in healing social ills, and unity in social justice in our land, we commit ourselves to the Lord. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. To the mission of being proclaimers of God's word, to animate each one to become a missionary, even at home, in our workplaces and neighborhood, and to form mission consciousness in all the faithful, we commit ourselves to the Lord. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. To faithfully follow health protocols and to do our part in stopping COVID-19. To ensure a safe, proper, and equitable distribution of vaccines. And to continually help those in the front lines and those greatly affected by this pan pandemic, we commit ourselves to the Lord. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. Now, please wear the cross of Christ. To our young people, we entrust to you this youth cross and the image of Nuestra Señora de Guia, the oldest Marian image in the Philippines. The faith you received as a gift, share and give as a gift. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now all together join in the singing and action of our official mission song, We Give Our Yes, to be sung by no other than Miss Jamie Rivera. Justice.